Hello, this is Nathan Webb, and this will be a demo on how to do inverse kinematics and forward kinematics switching on a limb on a character in Maya 2011. Now, something new in the past couple versions of Maya, they have a built-in system to switch between IK and FK. You can test this out yourself. I'm also going to show an older method of switching between IK and FK, where you duplicate your arm joints so you have an FK arm and an IK arm and then we can use the set driven key feature of Maya to blend back and forth between them. But first let's take a look at Maya's built in IK FK switching. So I'm going to double, I'm going to click on the IK handle tool, we'll click on the shoulder and then click on the wrist and you see it makes an IK handle so you can bend it like this. You can also grab the elbow and rotate it around and it looks this is in the FK method and that looks fine and you can grab the base of the arm and move it around and then you can grab the wrist and move it up and down as well so that's pretty fun but once you start setting keys you have to decide if you want to use IK or FK on the IK handle there's this new option which is IK blend and you can use this to fade in between inverse kinematics and forward kinematics. So let's give a quick test. Let's have the arm raise up with IK. So I'm going to hit the S button to set a key. I'm going to move it up here a little bit. Going to give us a little more time on the time range. And we'll raise it up and set a key. And IK arm raises don't look too great. IK is really good when the arm needs to be stuck someplace. Like if your character is doing a push up or putting his hand against the wall or doing a pull up, something like that. F IK is really good for. Or if you need to do like a handshake, if you want to attach, have two people shake hands, you can attach one person's IK handle to another person's arm and then the other person can drive the other person he's shaking hands with. But for general movement, I like using FK. So here we have a IK arm raise and then we can switch it to FK so I'm going to take the IK blend value 1 means IK 0 means FK so now I can start keying the arm and I can do a wave and you see as I move it the IK handle updates with it so when I'm moving the joints in the FK method the IK handle sticks to it which is pretty cool and then there's my wave not much of a wave but it'll work and then we can bring the arm down with IK now we can still pose the arm with the IK but it's not turned on. I see I'm selecting the handle and trying to move it, but it's not moving the arm. That's because the IK blend is off. So we're going to turn IK blend back to on, and then now we can take the arm and move it. And now when you do this, you notice it shows you where the old FK arm is. So if I turn IK blend to zero, it turns back, it brings the arm back to the FK one. Turn it to one, it goes to where the IK is and there's another nice option where you can have the IK arm match where the FK arm is going to be or was. To do that hit the spacebar go to animate IK FK keys and then move IK to FK. That's really good if you need to move the IK handle back to where the FK was. In the other method where you have three different joint chains where you have an IK1 and FK1 and then your bind one to get the IK to match the FK it's trickier you're gonna have to do some mel scripting or you can just eyeball it so this is how you can do the current the new method of switching between IK and FK the um, the switch you're gonna use is IK blend and the next part of this tutorial I'm gonna show you you how you use the older method of using three joint chains to get the same results and I find the controls to be better.
Now we're going to go over the older method of using three different joint chains. So let's get started. First, let's delete the IK handle and then take the arm back to its bind pose. Go to skin, go to bind pose. It'll pop the character back in its bind pose. And we can take a look at the joints. This one's going to be the one that our geometry is skinned to. So I'm going to add bind at the end of all these joints. Bind bind, bind, and I'm going to duplicate these. I don't have to worry about the end of the hand because I'm not actually going to bind that. So I'm going to duplicate this twice. The first one is going to be the IK one, and then the next one is going to be the FK one. Now normally I wouldn't translate these away from the arm, but just so you can see them easier, I'm going to translate them. So for, I'm going to delete the end of the hand. We don't need that on either of them. And I'm going to change this to be the uh, FK one. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to go to Modify, Search and Replace Names. Real useful tool. And I'm going to change Bind to FK. Hit Apply. And we have to change the first one because it adds a one to it. And then for this one, I'm going to change bind to IK. Hit apply. So now I have my three different joint chains. And I'm going to use the orient constraint or the parent constraint to get the, the FK one to control the bind one and then the IK one to control the bind one. Well, I'll use an orient constraint today. It's simpler. So to make the IK one, let's put an IK handle on here. You can double click to make sure we have a rotation plane solver. That'll let you use a pull vector control to wiggle the elbow. So we click the base of it, and then the end of it, and then we can move it back and forth. So there's our IK one. On the FK one, we'll just rotate it manually. I normally would put circle controllers, but for now we're just going to keep it simple. I had some animation on the joints of the bind arm. I want to make sure you deleted that. So we don't want to have any animation on our character as we're doing the rigging. So we make sure our channels are clean. You look on the channel controller. There shouldn't be any red channels or animation keys. So now let's go ahead and have this FK arm control the IK one. So select the FK1, that one's going to be controlling it, and then select the bind one, go to constrain, orient, and make sure to maintain its offsets on, and hit apply, and then we'll do that for each joint. So select the elbow of the FK1, select the elbow of the bind one, hit apply, and then the same thing with the wrist, hit apply. Now we should see that on the bind arm, the channels are blue over here. That means they have a constraint. You can see the three constraints right there. So as I move my FK arm, it moves the IK one. So that is how we're going to want it when we have the FK in control. Now we want to have the IK be in control. So I'm going to have the IK arm control the bind pose. Now if you select on a constraint you can see that there's an attribute here called wrist FK W0 and then the value is 1. This is wrist um, and the weight is 1. That means it's on. We could select all of these and type 0 in for the weight and then that constraint's turned off. Well at least it is for the base. You actually have to do it on each individual one. So we'll go over here and turn all of these constraints off. Now when I rotate this arm, nothing happens to the bind arm. And I can still rotate this one by myself, but it does show you that it still has a constraint on it. Now we want to have the IK arm control the bind arm as well. So I'm going to select the base of the IK arm and then select this, go to constrain and then orient, go to the options, hit apply, 
and then I'm going to have the elbow, control the elbow of this. Go to the options and hit apply. Now the wrist of the IK one won't be controlling the wrist joint of the bind one because IK actually only rotates the first two out of three joints in the chain. It doesn't actually rotate the wrist here. So now when I move the IK handle of the IK arm, you see that it moves the bind arm as we expect it to be. And also you could twist the arm. We should have a uh, pull vector control that, but just to show that it works. And if we take a look at the constraints now, if you take a look at the upper arm bind, there's two constraints on it. There's one FK and there's one IK. The FK one's off and the IK one's on. If you take a look at the elbow, you can see the same thing. FK's on, IK's off. And I'm going to use set driven key to make a switch where we can take those values and fade them on and off. Let's go ahead and create an object on which we're going to have the IKFK switch on. I'm just going to create a NURBS circle and we're going to put an attribute on that one. I'll put it above the wrist. We could actually parent it to the wrist as well if we want. And I'll call this one FKIK switch. And we're not going to translate it, rotate it, scale it, or turn the vis visibility on and off. I want to add a custom attribute to it that's called FKIK. So I'm going to go to edit and then add attribute. And I'll call it FKIK switch. And its minimum value is going to be 0. Maximum value is going to be 10. And the default one is going to be 0. You could have it go 0 and 1 like my built-in IK blend option is, but I like going to 0 to 10. And I'll hit apply or add. Now we see the FK switch on here. I'm going to go and hide the rest of these values or the attributes because I'm not going to use them. So you go to edit, channel control, and all those things are keyable. So I'm going to go and turn over here and move them so they're not keyable. And I could also make them lock, but I'm not going to bother to do that right now. So now I have an object called IKFK switch. If I grab it, I can use my middle mouse button and go from 0 to 10. When it's going to be at 0, it's going to be on uh, FK. And then when it's at 10, it'll be at on IK. You can decide which way you want to do that. So right now we have IK working and the switch is at zero so I'm going to go to set driven key go to animate set driven key set and this is going to be the driver my FK IK switch hit load driver and the driven part are going to be these constraints so the elbow one and the upper arm one can be load driven if you select them you see that there's FK and IK weights on them. So when this switch is at zero, I want my IK to be on, which is the way it is now. When I move my IK arm, it moves my bind arm. So I'm gonna select my first constraint, have these two values, have the IK switch selected, and hit key. And then I'll select this, select both the values, and hit key. Now I want to go to the other case. I want to set this to 10 so FK is on. So I set it to 10, go back to my set driven key, and I want to change it so my FK arm controls my bind arm. So I'm going to click on my elbow bind, and instead of the IK being on, I want the FK being on. So I'll type 1 and 0, and then for the other one, I want to have it be 1 and 0. So over here, I'll hit key, select this one, select both those weights, and hit key. 
So now I should have my FK arm controlling my bind arm and my IK1 shouldn't do anything. See the IK1 isn't doing anything. Here's my FK and the fun part about it now is I can switch the arm between those two states up and down by using the FK IK switch. So this is my preferred method of doing FK IK switching on a character's limb in Maya. This is really good for feet as well. You can keep your feet on IK when they're on the ground. If you have a character jumping up in the air or doing a flip, you can switch back to, to FK because that's really useful when character's feet are off the ground. And then when the character lands again, you can have them go back to IK. Thanks for watching. This was Nathan Webb. And to recap, we showed how you can use set driven key, orient constraints, and changing the weights, and using three different joint chains together to make one arm which is switchable between IK and FK. Thanks for watching again.